Hi everybody, how are you today? Hi, I'm Patricia and I'm here to help you with your ascension. Hey, on this video, I wanna to talk to you about making old friendships new again. Now, there's a few things to know, a little couple of disclaimers maybe, okay? I've been doing this a little while. What I have found is that this sort of ebbs and flows. It reminds me of a poem that you don't love someone in the same way all the time. It ebbs and flows like the ocean. It comes to you and it recedes. There are times we have to let people go. And some of those times are when we go into hermit mode. But there's another thing to know. Sometimes they are in hermit mode and sometimes all they need is a friend. Now this actually came up in our last class, you know, like how do we help the people that are near to us, okay? And you may feel like, you know, rah, rah, is this boom, bah, I got this. They won't even want to hear it, okay? It's hard to accept because people that are newly ascending usually do not have a context for it. But here's my recommendation. If they are a friend, a true friend, you will retain that friendship. Leave it a friendship be a friend. Okay. This also means leave the Ascension stuff to the people who are the experts at it, who are professional and are doing their clearing and are not going to take on stuff. You don't want to have a friendship where you're taking on stuff. You don't want friendships that are burdens. There's a difference between helping a friend and that person just dumping all over you. Okay. That's a lot of relationships. That's a lot of codependent behaviors. However, there is a way to do it using your energy bodies, using your light bodies, okay? Because for people that are ascending, you're going into a coupledom, okay? You will be with someone, but you each have friends. You each have family. You each have colleagues. You have people around you. You even have people in traffic. You have people that are all over the place. Sometimes just when you want to isolate yourself and be you know, free of people and their stuff. But then there's another part of you that will want to socialize. Now, if you're an introvert, what I have found is that in the years of doing this is that these energies that we call them, which is really love, love makes introverts a little bit more accepting and a little bit more sociable, okay? They're okay being alone. In fact, they are much happier being alone. They don't need a crowd. They don't want to be the life of the party. They don't even want to observe it sometimes. But they may enjoy having a one-on-one -on -one get together or a small dinner party or something that is of their interest, okay? They're happy being by themselves. There's a reason for it. They have an inner balance, okay? People who have not really gone far in their journey are always trying to plug in and fit other people in. Now, that doesn't always fill the tank. And you see this with people who overextend their sexual energy. They're trying to be with everyone. I see complaints. Why is dating all about sex? It's actually not all about sex. For a lot of people, it's all about financial resources or financial support and stability. It's some form of stability for those people. It's not even a real relationship. It's drama. What about other friends? Friends that are close friends. Friends where you want the friendship or you miss the friendship. Or you find yourself even grieving that, you know, you had this awakening because it's meant saying goodbye to so many people or they... I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to seem like people push you out the door. Why? Because if they didn't, you'd stay there with your big heart and you'd let them keep doing the same codependent stuff with you. Now, that separation happens. Within a family, it should happen at natural points, uh, such as when a child is a baby and they're no longer nursing or they have to sleep by themselves in their crib and they cry themselves to sleep. Babies learn to self-comfort. Adults don't. 
Adults forget and they will reach, and men are so guilty of this sometimes, certain men, they're so guilty of reaching out to other people because they have forgotten how to self-comfort. And women do it too when they need stability and they forget how to self-comfort or self-reliance. Now, when you're on this journey, that comes as the result of doing my work, where you achieve that inner balance. And the self-reliance comes from the higher self. And it comes through the essence, the aura. That is what opens the doors. Now, those are in families and relationships. When it's friends, when it's best friends, okay? Here's my recommendation. Do friends stuff. If you have made a friend and you find out all you're doing is getting messages for each other, you're too tapped into each other's mental energy, frankly. If you're like, oh, I dreamed and I dreamed your person and they said this and they did that, that's going to be their imagination. That's a part of them. It's usually a figment of the part of us that does wishful thinking and imagination. It is not the honest to God truth and where is the friendship in that anyway? Because real friends shouldn't make each other feel worse. Okay, there is a spiritual axiom at work here. If you're feeling good, if it's uplifting, then it's good, it's friendly. If it is not, if it's dragging you down, draining you, discouraging you, not building you up, not encouraging you, then say goodbye for a while. Okay, you may have had good times because some friends are there for a season. Some friends are like a stepping stone to help you get through something. Even someone that you're involved with, they may have helped you through grief. They may have helped you at a hard time when, in your family life. They may have helped you with an addiction when you were getting sober from it. Okay, but you need to recognize that not everything is intended to continue forever. And sometimes the divine has something even better for you. Now, how do you say goodbye? You say it with well, what we would call grace, but the highest way possible with an intention for their best wishes and your best wishes. But I'm going to tell you a wish for you. If you really want a friendship, if it's important to you, then ask, wish for that friendship to be resumed at some point in your journey because it will. Now, I have a personal experience of this. I had a friend and like for 10 years, we had lost touch. Both of our lives changed. I had gotten divorced. She actually met someone. That person had a child. And there we were at the Trader Joe's grocery store. And I literally walked right past her and did a double take. I walked past and I did this. Oh, and then I hid around the corner and I stared at her. And I was like, that's my friend. Oh my God, we're right there. God put us like right in the same place at the same time. What do I do? And you know what the answer was? It came right through me. Go resume your friendship and say hi. And I was like, Oh my God, I was such an idiot the last time we talked. Like, she's going to think I'm still an idiot. No. Time had healed those wounds sufficiently to the degree that we could resume our friendship. And was she my best friend from childhood? No. We had had a lot of good times together. And when I started going through a rough time, I was an idiot, you know? I was like mm -hmm. that wounded elephant, you know, lashing out and breaking things. I walked right up to her and I was like, hi. And she, without even hesitating, without skipping a beat, said, oh, hi, Trish, how are you? And just like that, we exchanged phone numbers. We resumed a friendship. We went for coffee and it's been great. Now, that was a few years ago. How do you resume friendships with people when it's important to you? Like it's your child, it's your parent. They go through stuff. You've gone through stuff. Your friends. I've had a number of people tell me recently because this time frame from now until the end of the year is going to be about major changes with relationships. And you can either do it the right way, okay, and at the very least be a diplomat, 
or you could do it the wrong way and continue going around like everyone's got to hate each other and like keep, you know, keep a distance. Are there toxic people? Of course. And here's what you need to know about that. Okay. The more you develop your light body, you actually are not only head and shoulders. That toxic stuff is mostly down here and you rarely encounter it. You may, if you're in a dip or if you lower your vibration, but if you're doing your maintenance, it becomes a thing of the past. And there's another thing to know. People wait for the shoe to drop. They're like, it's pretty good. I did. I was like, well, it's pretty good. Things are okay. Like, when is that shoe going to drop? It doesn't drop for you. What happens is sometimes you see them go through stuff and you do -do -do deflect it very easily because you've done your work, you've maintained you are doing your daily routine to maintain, and you did the hard knocks, hard won experience in order to get it there because you valued it and you value yourself. This is real self-value, is when you value self so much that you are starting to select and pick and choose what you want in your life, even if you can't have it yet, okay? Even if it's not showing up just yet. Like that friendship where you're like, oh, they're going through a divorce and I really, oh God, I'm going to comment if I, you know, if they're there. Or like me, when I was like starting to like do so much self-improvement and I'd show up at the same meeting and this lady's talking about her husband and I had to resist the urge to, you know, stand up and say, just leave the jerk already. Just leave, just go. She could not see the forest for the trees. She was so stuck in that pattern of weird, icky codependency and patterns of their behaviors. She could not see it as clearly as those of us that she was talking to. And I, I left. I left. I'm the one that left. Because I'm like, I'm somehow beyond this. Not that I'm better than her, but I'm seeing it so clearly what to do. And yet I was her. I was not able to leave my situation even though people around me saw it and that's one of the things to know when you are emotionally attached to people that's where it has to begin and i have the ways to help you do this easily so that you are compassionate you're compassionately detached but you would feel even deeper in your intuitions and your insights and that stuff that just like boom helps you in the moment to know what does my friend need my friend just needs a hug or my friend needs a little outing or my kid needs this or that or my parent could use this or that right or my boss i did something very powerful when i was working right i worked at this place and the boss was a little bit of a tyrant and without intention because i'm sure if you went and said something but they had immigrated from another country. So they had like this weird toughness that didn't jive with a lot of the people in that office. So one day I decided to say to myself, show me how I'm like this person. And it took three days, but it came. And I was like, oh my God, and I'm, I'm an enabler. It wasn't about the work situation. It was about loving someone who was addicted. And that boss loved their child. And I had a situation and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. We're the same, we're the same, we're both enablers. But you know what that did? That leveled the playing field and helped me be compassionate. And sometimes you need to do these really deep but tough things so that you can get where you're going and you don't stay stuck. You don't, you know, stay with superstitions or the old stuff that people say like, you know, they're afraid of your light. That's not true. Everyone has a light inside them, even toxic people. It's covered up with a lot of crud. It's like an entire building fell on them in an earthquake or traumas or everything else that needs to be excavated. What they're going through is not your problem. How you feel, that is. And that is what I'm here to help you with. So join us, learn, 
Learn how to get where you are going. Get my book where I outline it. It is very good and it has helped so many people because it is the way that I had to do it. The only way that I had was with my heart energy, but it wasn't by sucking it up and like turning the other cheek and letting people just have at me. No, it was rising up and using my heart energy to change the vibe of the entire situation, to regain the things that I valued and to get more. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.